Joining me now is the Chief Scientist for the International Space Station, Julie Robinson. And Julie, you're here in town with us in Huntsville at the Payload Operations Center, and, and there's a working group going on. And this is the chance for you guys to go face to face with those payload developers and researchers. Yeah, so twice a year, all the investigators come from the that are working on the International Space Station all around the country, all around the world. And the payload developers, those are especially the people, the engineers and operators that help the scientists get their work done. They all come here to Huntsville to talk to all of the people who are sitting right here in the control center and uh, talk to them about their research, what they're going to be doing on orbit, all of the different challenges ahead so they can really get that plan together and be ready to operate. They all want a piece of your time. They, you're the key to getting them onto space station sometimes, right? Tell us, tell us how that works when they come to you and say, hey, we have this great idea. Yeah, you know, things start from an idea, but they go from an idea. The next thing the scientist has to do is get funding for that idea. And they go, they've got to pitch it. They send proposals to different organizations. Um, for the ISS, they can send them to NASA organizations, but they also send them to our national lab manager, the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space. Even other government agencies like the NIH and NSF sometimes fund research on the space station. Once they get that funding, then the job really begins because they are uh, putting all the plans together, trying to figure out how what they need to launch, how much they need to launch, what are the procedures going to be, and then as they get planned in, once they get to that time when they're really ready to fly, they come here to make those final plans. So I've been here since Expedition 6. Uh, you've been here how long? Uh, since <laughs> Re well, I, I started working on ISS before it launched, wow. um, but uh, I came to the space station program in Expedition 9. So. so what do you see when you look at the space station now? What do you see? Yeah, the biggest thing that struck me today, especially with all, all the payload developers in town, was the first meeting of this type that I went to back in 2004. And it was in a small conference room with about 40 people because we only had 15 payloads, 15 to 20 payloads or experiments that we were going to do on orbit at that time. And uh, today, it's amazing. There are over 300 attendees. It's really a sign of one principle that a lot of people haven't heard about, which is that the space station is full. It's very competitive to get up there, to get going. Uh, scientists always have to keep looking for money, and the competition among those payloads is a really good thing because it means that we're having the best of the best go into space. A lot of commercial partners up there now. Let's talk about their research and, and how that's making a difference now. Yeah, one of the interesting things that we see is NASA research is more focused on future exploration. You know, what do we need to know so that humans will be healthy when they go to Mars? Uh, right now, if we sent humans to Mars, they would not be in great shape when they got there. There'd be a number of problems we haven't solved yet. Uh, NASA also focuses on better spacecraft materials, other kinds of things, new technologies. Uh, on the other hand, the space station can do so much more because there's research there that can help in improving health on Earth that can provide better materials, that make better products, and really help our economy be strong. That kind of research, sometimes it comes out of the NASA work anyway, but a lot of times it comes in through the ISS National Laboratory. Congress declared ISS a national lab clear back in 2005 for just this reason, so that people could do that research and be sure that we got the maximum benefit back here on Earth for the American people. And probably one of the most exciting things coming up is that Scott Kelly is gonna return after being there a year. Tell us about that research and what that's going to mean to, to the whole science community. Yeah, well, the, you know, the last time we had crew members on orbit for that long, it was Russian cosmonauts, and it was at a time when we just didn't have the medical technologies that we have today. So we've been able to do some amazing things with the one-year increment with both Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, or Misha we call him. Um, and both of them are participating in a set of joint research studies that were developed between the U.S. and the Russian side working together. One of the most exciting one of the ones of those is fluid shifts, where we're actually using a Russian device called Chibis to draw the fluid out of the upper body and then measuring if that helps with some of the vision loss troubles that some astronauts have in space. And so these are our first two subjects. The other thing that's of course amazing is to see that whole year because most of our expeditions to the space station are about six months or even shorter. And we know that a transit to Mars is between six months and a year. So knowing that longer period of time helps us know if there's some exploration research that we're missing out on today that we really need to do so that we'll be sure that we we'll are go for Mars when the vehicles go for Mars. Some news coming out hopefully this week. You've had the hard job of looking at and picking the top four 
<laughs> most important research uh, results from last year. Yeah, well, I, I have a blog called A Lab Aloft, and uh, we uh, we put in that blog, we put you know things that are crossing our desk that are interesting, what's the latest and greatest, and someone asked me to please tell them what the top three results were of the year, and I sat down with some of my science staff, and we brainstormed, and we threw out different ideas, and we wrote them on the whiteboard, and we settled on four. We, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, we, couldn't, we could not cut it to three, and the reason we had to settle on four is because there's so many different disciplines doing work on the space station, so you can pick you know, what's the most exciting thing that happened in life science, but you're leaving out all the physical scientists and all the earth scientists. So we did get it down to four. So can you give us a sneak peek of what that's A sneak peek? Are? Okay. Well, one of them is, is actually based on research that happened a while back on the space station, and that was some protein crystal growth research where Japanese investigators got better structure on a protein that helped them design a drug to treat Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. It's a form of muscular dystrophy. It's genetic. It affects boys. And it's really pretty common, like 1 in 10,000 boys. So they got as far as testing this potential drug in animal models, because there are some animals that also have a genetic disorder that looks like muscular dystrophy. But um, that's as far as it had gotten. And this year, uh, through a new partnership, they are starting clinical trials in humans. So you never know. I, a lot of clinical trials end in stepping away and deciding that's not a good treatment. But in my mind, once we've gotten to that point, then it means if it doesn't go on to become a treatment, it's because it wasn't a good treatment. It's not because somebody couldn't raise the funding. And so in my mind, once we get to this point and judge it on its merits, that's, the, that's a real goal for all of our space station research that's helpful to health here on Earth. It's a success. Finally, before you go, we won't we won't give away the other three. We'll make people go to your blog and, oh, okay. and see that. That's good. A lab aloft. You're here also tonight. They're opening a new science exhibit, Science on Orbit, at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville. You're going to be there for that. What what's that like to see see it really just being an exhibit and people can really learn more about the space station? Well, one of the great things on the space station today is that we have so many stories of the different outstanding research discoveries, research impacts, people that are alive today because of research on the space station. And those stories are now becoming parts of the major exhibits. And so this exhibit at the Space and Rocket Center, uh, my scientific team and other specialists from around the agency had their inputs into that so that we could be sure to tell the whole story of the space station, not just the engineering story of how did we build the most amazing spacecraft ever built, and not just the story of living and working in space and what it's like to be an astronaut, but also the story of how it makes our lives better right here on Earth. And so it's really exciting to be here for that opening and for that story to be told right here in Huntsville where the people who do that research yeah. live and work as well. And the, and the folks right, right behind us that are working right now. Julie, thank you so much for taking time with us. Great pleasure, Lori.